All right, so this is going to be my fourth example on uh, integration with uh, partial fractions. Uh, here's some here's some guidelines to go by to how we expand it out, uh, how we write our partial fractions. I'm not going to go over it in this video. If you want to hear a little explanation of it, you can watch my first video. I, I go through these guidelines in it. So let's go ahead and get started on this fourth example here. So we got the integral of x cubed plus 13x over x squared plus 2, all of that squared dx. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, factor out the denominator. But if you see here, the x squared plus 2 squared, it doesn't factor. So now we can go ahead and uh, write the partial fractions. So I have 8x cubed plus 13x over x squared plus 2 squared is equal to, now notice that this is a quadratic, so that's going to be ax plus b over x squared plus 2 plus, and since, I have, since this is squared, I've got to do it again, that's going to be cx plus d over x squared plus 2, all of that squared. Alright, so now we have to multiply everything by the common denominator, and in this case it's going to be x squared plus 2 squared, and so when I multiply everything by the common denominator, when I multiply this term times the common denominator, the denominator cancels out, and I'm left with 8x cubed plus 13x equals, and then here an x squared plus 2, and one of the x squared plus 2's cancel here, so I'll still be left with 1x squared plus 2. And so that's going to give me ax plus b times x squared plus 2 plus, and then when I multiply the common denominator to this term, the x squared plus 2 squared is going to cancel out, so I'm left with cx plus d. Alright, <clears throat> so if you've watched my other videos, you'll notice that we let x equal something. Uh, to make this, to make the term go out to uh, zero, okay? But there's nothing we can let, well, we can't let x equal anything to make this go out to zero. And then, well, if we let x equal zero, we'll still be left with a d, an a, and a b. So that's not really going to do us any good. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply everything out. So that's going to be 8x cubed plus 13x equals, and now i got to fold this out, that's going to be ax cubed, ax times x squared, and then ax times 2 plus 2ax, and then the b times x squared, so that'll be plus bx squared, and then the b times 2 will be plus 2b, and then I have my plus cx and plus d. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to group my like terms together. So I have 8x cubed plus 13x equals ax cubed, I only have one x cubed term, and then the x squared terms, I only have one of those, so plus bx squared. And then the x terms, I have two of those. I've got plus 2ax plus cx, and then my plus d. And so now, I'm going to write this as 8x cubed plus 13x equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus, and then here I'm going to factor out an x term. So that's going to be 2a plus c 
times x plus d. All right. <clears throat> so let's look at this. Well, you see my x cubed term? I have an x cubed term here and an x cubed term over here. Well, look at the coefficient of this x cubed term. It's 8. So that's what a is. a is equal to 8. That's the coefficient of the x cubed term. And then the coefficient of the x term. All right, so here's the coefficient of the x term over here, the 2a plus c, and that has to equal the coefficient of the x term on this side. All right, so notice I don't have an x squared term. There's no x squared term over here, and there's no constant term over here. So this tells me that b is equal to 0, and d is equal to 0, and I have a is equal to 8 right here, and then I also have 2a plus c is equal to 13. So I know what everything is. I know what b is, d is, and a is. The only thing I don't know is c. So let's look at this again. So I know A, I know B, and I know D. So all I have to do is figure out what C is. Well, I have this equation here, and I know A is 8. So I can take the 8 and plug it in for A. So I get 2 times 8 plus C equals 13. So this is going to give me c is equal to negative 3. So now you can see I have all of my variables. I've got a, b, d, and c. So I'll take all three of these and plug them in to here. Okay. All right, so now I have the integral 8x cubed plus 13x over x squared plus 2 squared dx and that's equal to ax okay you see that's equal to ax plus b so ax, that's going to be 8x plus b, and b is 0. So that's over x squared plus 2, all right, plus, okay, plus cx plus d. See, the cx plus d. Well, c is negative 3 and d is 0. So that's going to give me negative 3x over x squared plus 2 squared dx. And so this is going to be 8x over x squared plus 2 plus, let me go ahead and put this in parentheses, well not plus, uh, I've got a minus and a plus, so that's minus 3x over x squared plus 2 squared dx. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to integrate each term. Well, this one, that's just going to be natural log. If I take the derivative of the denominator, that's going to give me 2x. And I know up here is an 8x. Well, if I pull a 4 out, the 8 can be written as 4 times 2. So there's my 2x, and I can pull the 4 out. So this one is going to be 4 natural log x squared plus 2 minus, and then this one 
this is this one's not going to be natural law because I have this squared here. This is going to be u substitution. I would let u equal x squared plus 2 and so du is 2x dx and also you'll you'll probably want to rewrite this up here okay you'll want to rewrite that as x squared plus 2 to the negative 2 and you can use your u substitution uh, this is something you should you should already know how to do uh, and once we integrate this, it's gonna. This is gonna end up changing to a plus, and then we'll have a three, two times x squared plus two, and then all of that plus c, and this would be our final answer here. So, I hope this video helped. Uh, hope you'll watch my other videos, and if you like them, you can uh, subscribe. All right, thanks.